the power of the conscious mind is reasoning. The three keys to reasoning are attention, imagination, and memory. You know, your memory is your ability to understand what happened in the past. Your attention is your ability to understand what's happening in the present moment. And your imagination is your un ability to understand what is possible to happen in the future. And through this, the more, the better you have uh, control over your attention, memory, and imagination, then the more stronger your reasoning ability will be. And intuition, which is the power of the subconscious mind, which we'll get into, is built off of reasoning. So the stronger your reasoning ability is, the stronger your intuition is naturally going to be. So the reason I am going so in depth over the conscious mind in regards to visualization is because the conscious mind is the director. It creates the life experiences. And so it's the director of the subconscious mind. It tells the subconscious mind what it wants. That's how the conscious mind creates the life experiences. Is because you know the, the subconscious mind's duty is to manifest the thoughts of the conscious mind. As the conscious mind thinks the thought down here in the physical, it will imprint into the mental level. Every thought that you think seeks to manifest. But it's like if you go to an empty garden freshly tilled and you throw a bunch of seeds out there, you just get a handful of seeds out of a bag and just throw all these seeds out there. You know, the vast majority of those seeds are gonna take root and grow. And you're gonna have a beautiful garden with tons of flowers or plants or vegetation of whatever you just sprinkled out there. If you don't till the garden and you just go to a, a field with all these weeds and grass and bushes and everything, you take that same handful of seeds. I mean, you should take, take two or three handfuls of seeds and throw them out there and count how many actually grow. What I'm, what I'm saying is no matter how many thoughts get planted into the mental level, because every thought seeks to manifest, no matter how many that are trying to manifest actually get there, you know, only the ones that are thought the most or have the strongest energy behind them, meaning the most vivid and vibrant thought that we think, you know, the more energy you put behind a thought or how many times you think that thought will determine what thoughts end up manifesting. You know, like those seeds that you threw out there, they're still out there. You know, they're planted. But if the other weeds and things, you know, negative thoughts is what a weed's going to represent. You know, other if the other weeds are what's giving, getting all of the nutrients out of the ground, then that seed will never grow. But you can come back a year later after throwing those three handfuls, you can come back a year later and uproot all of those weeds. And then those seeds that have been sitting there for a year waiting will begin to take root and, and, and sprout. I'm just saying all of that to help you to understand, like I said, the mechanics of visualization how those mechanics apply to visualization is that visualization is, like I said, having conscious control over your imagination, the images within your mind. So just like the concentration exercise is not only putting your attention where you want it, but holding it there. The same thing with, with visualization, creating a visual, creating a visual image within your mind of exactly what you want, and then holding your attention upon that image so that it gets brighter, you know, it has more, it has more um, light to it. That's going to be, that's what I was talking about as far as like the density, the energy behind it, the power, the magnitude of the thought. The more light you can give it, the more vivid it can be in your mind, that's going to be a more powerful thought. Or how many times you think it. So how many times you practice visualization. I always suggest everybody to visualize what they want every morning and every night. Spend at least like five minutes as part of your morning routine and nightly routine. You don't have to do it exactly when you wake up or just before you go to sleep. I mean, you know, it's probably more powerful that way because you're even more connected to the subconscious mind at those points, but that's all right. You know, in the morning time, you're more focused on writing down your dream first thing anyways. That's going to be better for you anyways. Saying all of that to understand how those mechanics eventually end up applying to visualization.